Hey guys, so today what we're going to be doing is teaching you how to process a hyperlapse or time lapse with the raw files that you got off from your R6. What I did was I used the intervalometer and I set it to take a shot every two seconds. So once you've got your scene set up and you set it to shoot every couple of seconds, and again you can use different settings to make different types of hyperlapses, and I'll make another video about how to do that kind of stuff out in the actual field, but today we're just going to be talking about how to process those images. So again, we're using raw images or CR3 files off from the Canon R6. R6, and let's get right into it. So the first thing we're going to be doing is using Adobe Bridge. So what we're going to do here is we're just going to select the actual files that we want. So this is the beginning of the hyperlapse here. So we're going to select it. And then what we're going to do is scroll way down until we find where the end of that sequence is. Now see this is a separate sequence. And you'll see right here where it actually got blown out or it was too bright. So what I'm going to do is just back off to where it's not too blown out, which is like kind of like, let's call it here. So what I'm gonna do is hold shift and select all of those images in that sequence, okay? And then what we're gonna do is right click and hit open in camera raw. So what's gonna happen now is we're gonna open all of these files up into camera raw. And this is going to allow us to just basically do like some basic kind of like color grading or exposure changes that we wanna do and then batch these all out into a JPEG. So what we're gonna do again is go down here and I'm gonna hold Command and hit A. And that's gonna select all of these images here. And you know what I'm actually gonna do is I'm actually gonna view further out into this sequence so we see where it's a little bit more blown out towards the end of the sequence here. And again, make sure I Command A, make sure they're all selected so that all of these changes that we make apply to all of these same files. So what we're gonna do is we're just going to pull the highlights back a bit, right? and shadows are up a bit as you can see what i did with the previous um hyperlapse that i've already made all the settings that i've changed are already here so but you would make your basic exposure changes whites up blacks down vibrance up what kind of white balance do you want all of those changes any type of changes that you want to your specific images here and then once you're done that what we're going to do is batch those out so all you're going to do is go up here and we're going to make JPEGs, okay? So we're gonna make JPEGs, and the really important thing here is once you have these put into whatever folder destination that you want them, you need to make sure that you set this digital serial number, okay? And you want this to be set to one, and that's gonna be very important. So beginning number, we would do one, okay? And then what that's going to do is it's gonna make it sequential. So you're gonna have, you know, image one, two, three, four, all the way up through however many images you have. I think this one is around like 800 shots. So that's really important because after we batch this out into JPEGs, then we're going to pull this into Premiere Pro and we're going to actually make it a time lapse, but it needs to have those sequential numbers applied to each image because that's what we're gonna do is image sequencing in Premiere Pro. We need to have those sequential numbers applied to every single one of the save files that we're about to make. So all you would do after that, you name the uh, files, whatever you want. Again, this is just gonna apply that sequential numbering to the end of that file so you'll get like you know sunrise winter lake vermont one two three four five six and then you'll just hit save once you do that it's going to batch out all of those shots and this is going to take some time depending on how good your computer is and whether you're using ssd drives or regular drives so that'll take different amounts of time depending on your setup but once that's done we're going to go right into Premiere Pro. Okay guys, so once we have Premiere Pro open we're just going to go ahead and make a new project so we're going to go to new project here and we're just gonna name it Hyperlapse 34, because I don't know how many I've had already. And we're just gonna hit okay. All right, so now what we need to do is again, grab those sequential numbered files that we made before. So what I'm gonna do is go to import, right click on and go to import. And then we're gonna find those files and we're gonna go over here. And again, so what we're gonna do, now you'll see I have these again sequentially numbered. So I'm just gonna select the first one and on a Mac, you'll go to Options here and hit Image Sequence, okay? So once you have the first one selected and you have Image Sequence selected, you're just gonna hit Import. And it's gonna take all of those files and make it into a nice little time-lapse for you already, okay? Right off the bat like that. Now, 
things to uh, pay attention to are what frame rate you're going to want to make this, right? So I'd make everything in 24 frames per second, you know, depending on where in the world you are, you might make it 30 frames a second, 24, you know, that's preference. But what I'm going to do is go to modify, interpret footage, and then we're just going to go and you see that it makes it 29.9, so 30 frames per second. I'm going to change that to 23.976. 24 frames per second and then we're going to drag that into the timeline over here so once I've got that in the timeline we have the hyperlapse that we wanted to make so what we're going to do now is render so I'm just going to hit sequence and render in and out and then our computer is going to actually render in each one of those frames that we've created and that's going to allow us to actually view this with a nice smooth playback. Okay, so it's finished rendering so now we can actually view it. So let's check it out and see what it looks like here when it's nice and smooth. So again, these shots were taken at two second intervals so it's taking a shot every two seconds. It was like 800 something frames so it was out there for quite a while shooting during the sunrise and got pretty decent results with it. Again, I'm shooting these in RAW, and that gives me the ability to really recover shadows and play with highlights and coloring, so that way I'm able to get the absolute best image quality possible when using the R6 files to make a hyperlapse. Because remember, they do have a video mode that makes hyperlapses too, but that's the noob hyperlapse. If you want like pro-level hyperlapses, like what you're seeing here, then this is what you're going to need to do. Now again, right about here, it's just getting blown out. So let's just cut it, right? Let's just cut the fat right off it. Boom. And again, now it's going to cut itself off before those highlights start to really blow themselves out. Cool. All right, so what do we want to do now? Let's go one step further and actually like apply a little zooming crop. So let's go to the beginning. And this is something that's important for you to learn. This is keyframing, and it's going to present itself in a lot of different aspects of editing in Premiere Pro. So it's something that's good for you to dip your toes in here. So we're going to click the file, and we're going to go over to the Effects tab here. And once we're looking at the effects tab that's um, addressing this file here specifically, we want to go to scale, and we're going to click this little toggle animation here, we click it, and that's going to create our first keyframe here. Okay, so now it's going to be starting at this exact point, in this scale here. So what we're going to do is then go to the end of it, so let's find the second to last frame here. Okay, that's right here. And then let's decide where we want to scale it. So how much do we want it to go? Let's make it fade to about there. Maybe a little further. Okay. So again, this has created another keyframe. So we've already done what we need to do. We've created a keyframe at 100% scale and a keyframe at 145% scale. And now if we go back and we view it, we'll notice that it slowly just creeps in on you as we watch that hyperlapse. Cool. So that's the one step further that we went. So now what do we want? Let's add some music to it. So let's go to import and let's go to my downloads. Okay, so we're just going to import Never Met Him and drag it below. Okay, so again, we'll just render that in. Sequence, render, sequence, render in and out. And here we go, guys. Let's see what the finished result looks like. That's about it guys, so if you think this video helped you, go below, subscribe, click the notification bell, and I'll see you guys on my next video.